Fellas, welcome. Now, you might remember our recent video where we got a wheel up to... Well, not the speed of sound, but give it a tiny bit, and it would have gotten there. Now, before we tear this machine apart to modify it to get it to spin quicker, I think we should get up to... 9,000 revolutions per minute. And 9,000 revolutions would equal... Based on the calculations we did last time, if you recall, 900 revs was 100 k's. As for 9,000 revs, that equals a thousand kilometers an hour. Can't even imagine what sort of tire can live through that. We definitely need to give this a try. Why don't we mount a completely rooted tire onto this thing, spin it up, and hopefully it falls apart. After that, we'll modify the machine and get that wheel to spin as fast as possible. Let's do this. Without even the slightest rotation, you can tell that it is totally warped. It'll do. We're about to straighten that tire using the centrifugal force. Let's rock. We're good. Yay! Here's what happened. So apparently when the wheel started to accelerate, it expanded due to the centrifugal forces and came into contact with the gravel. It is completely boned. It all happened in fourth gear at full tilt. What vehicle speed would that be? What was it last time? 300? 320, 330 maybe? And it went kablamo. What we really wanted to do was bring the wheel up to the speed of sound. In the air, that'd be around 1,224 kilometers an hour. And as we've worked out, 1,000 kilometers an hour would mean bringing the revs up to 9,000. But 1,200, that's 9,000, plus we add another 1,800, and we get 10,800. Are the differentials even gonna survive that kind of speed? That is definitely a concern. They're not designed to do that kind of speed. Okay, let's make us a machine that'll give us all the revs we need and try finding a tire that'll be able to endure that kind of rotation speed. Let's do this. Coming at you with some new merch, fellas. You would have noticed that we're constantly adding new stuff to our lineup, which already includes a bunch of different t-shirts. You can get yourself a baseball cap with a flat brim or with a bendy one. And now we've also added these sweet t-shirts. That's say enough talk, let's do this. Which is a catchphrase of mine that you hear pretty often. Then you've got this one that depicts a motorcycle engine, so that's pretty cool. Plus, don't forget that we offer personalized mugs, which we'll send anywhere in the world. This one is leaving the country, as a matter of fact. Plus, we've got a new iteration of our document holder. As you can see, you've got a red logo instead of a white one. And you can have it just say... Garage 54 instead of showing your license plate. So yeah, it can just say Garage 54. There you go, fellas. You'll find a link in the description. Hit that, head on over and grab yourself something. Can we make a tire spin at the speed of sound? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Here's what's happening, guys. We've revised the entire setup, and now there is just the matter of gauging all of this. As in testing to see how many revs it puts out. We do have our tachometer on us. Why don't we try measuring without a wheel for starters? So we position the tachometer, make a mark for it to read, and try this out. Look at this, fellas. We've welded in some additional reinforcement. It's all good. We don't have any braces here, while we're still not running a wheel. We've got a spacer, which is for the bolt pattern we have on that wheel. And now, just out of sheer curiosity, I'd like to gauge... Let's just call it as it is. The terminal rev count. What do we got? Okay, that's 1,400 already at idle. Want me to throw it into fourth? Yeah, sure. Right. 
We are getting somewhere. Something just hit my forehead. And so in the end, we needed to get up to 10,800. So 10,800 revolutions. Congratulations to us. We're at 13,798. Let's call it 13,800. Yo, dude, feel how warm it is. Even with no load, it was spinning pretty fast. What do you know? I'm not sure if a lot of differential was designed to withstand that, I mean to spin at such high speed. But so far with no load it seems to be holding up even. And that's quite nice. So where do we go from here? That wheel was a 13, while this right here is a 17. The diameter on this one is bigger and so... We won't need as many revs. So look here, fellows. We are looking very good. This field is the perfect place for shenanigans. You would have seen us come out here on a bunch of occasions. We've got the 17-inch wheel on there. We'll work out the speed percentage a bit later. We do have a calculator, so we can figure out the margin of error. I mean the difference in vehicle speed between a 13 and a 17-inch wheel at the same rev count. One of the cameras fell over, but it's fine. Forty seven hundred. Forty eight hundred. Come on. Ah, the engine's too weak. Isn't that unfortunate? Here's what's happening, people. What's curious about all of this is... When we were spinning just the hub, we got it up to almost 14 grand. The 13-inch wheel we were able to spin at almost 6,000, at which point it was no longer fit for use. But now with the 17-inch wheel, I guess it just weighs too much. It's too big, so it takes quite a bit of energy to get it spinning. 4,800 revs and it wouldn't go any further. We run out of engine at that point. Can you even imagine? So if it doesn't want to spin up a big wheel, let's install something small. Like a 13, for example, which should be at least 5 to 6 kilos lighter. This engine makes 60 horsepower, and for some reason that isn't enough. Holy moly, we were not expecting this to happen. This won't do, that's just too slow. We need more. Right, let's replace the wheel and keep right on going. While we were setting all of this up, we noticed a problem, in that the diff is binding up. We still think we might have a chance. Now, you know what? We definitely have a chance. Ten... Thousand... Eleven. We have to get there. If the differential can keep it together, it is starting to crumble. Which is a bit concerning. Whatever, let's do this. What? Oh, we're out of gas. We need gas. Benzin! That's fourth. 2400, 2800, step away. We ready? 4100, 4300. 
4,700, 4,800, 5,000. That last wheel burst at five. We're out of engine. Did the wheel explode? Yeah, the last one did at this speed. We don't have enough power. Hooray! <laughs> Holy cow! That's how fast it was going. 5,480. That's what it says on the gauge. 5,480 and that's it. And here's what happened, fellas. We heard something pop. That may be around 4,800. We heard a pop. We thought it might be the wheel. But that wasn't it. It actually held up until about five and a half thousand. And the explosion was so epic that it took out half of the frame. And a piece flew way over there to where those guys are at. So they're looking for the missing piece as we speak. As for what happened over here, this link used to be... It used to be a link with a bushing, and now it's all bent up. It's broken. I just want to say to you fellows that safety measures are a very important thing. It's something that you really have to take seriously. You shouldn't take it as lightly as we did today. We found a chunk of tire lying in the woods like 40 meters away from the machine. Our cars are parked downhill, and the machine is also sitting down there. So a piece of tire this big was hurled like... It flew all the way through that birch grove and wound up a good 100 meters away from the machine. Now, I was wondering where a missing cross brace went, and let me just show you. I'm gonna show you guys where that wound up. It's lying way over here. Here it is. Over 100 meters away. And there you go. So there you have it. That was our experiment for today. I honestly don't know whether we should be laughing or crying. So the machine is fitted with a box tube cage that's not particularly stiff, but we did not expect that when the tire explodes, that it'd do so much damage. We didn't think it'd take out bits like this. It's pretty terrifying if you think about it. The tire didn't peel off the rim, but at about 5,000 and change, like 5,200, 5,300, yeah, that's where we were. So the tire literally fell apart and exploded, taking out half of the machine in the process. And here's another thing. If you look at the differential housing, there are cracks forming, couldn't handle the stress. So where does that leave us then? The engine is down on power, though the gearing is fine. We need to improve on the design. Perhaps we take a good old Japanese motor, a new gearbox, 
Oh, an automatic, I guess, instead of the manual we are running here. And a rear axle from some other car, not a lot of... No offense to the people who designed this, but we need something more heavy-duty. That'll be able to take the stress. So we'll put together another one of these, and that's when I think we'll actually be able to make this work. Get up to at least... We won't necessarily be breaking the sound barrier, but we need to get to a thousand. If you guys support the idea, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. We'll see how many we get, and if there's enough interest, we'll keep the ball rolling. And that's all I have for you, fellas. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions. Give us a big thumbs up. We got some sick caps. All right, catch you later. You'll find a link to our merch in the description. Под видео.